So now let me explain um, offset. So to, to explain offset, you just have to look at the screen and let me give a detailed explanation of the offset function. So if I highlight, I'm going to put some random numbers in here. So I put some random numbers in there. So these are my random numbers. I'm going to stick, I'm just going to color the middle here. So you know where the middle is. Now, just take it that Offset is a soldier. He's a military guy. He works in the army and he takes instructions from you on whether to go left or whether to go right or whether to go up or whether to go down. That's, that's Offset. Offset just stands in a particular position. In fact, let's just assume, right, that Offset stands right here in the middle. So Offset is there and you tell him, march right one step. So he goes right one step. Uh, right one step means go to 702. Then he picks 702 and gives you 702. So he's marched right one step, right? So he's standing in the middle and you tell him march down one step. March down one step, he goes and picks 48. And then you immediately tell him march down one step and write two steps. So he's come down one step and write two steps. So he's basically gone to 223. So what you need to tell him is go up, down, left, right. Now in Excel, left and right is going columns. You're moving from one column to the other. If you're going left and right, you're moving from one column to another. If you're going up and down in Excel, it means you're moving from one row to another. So up and down are rows, left and right are columns. So if you tell offset, go down, you're saying go down, let's say go down one row means go down plus one. Plus one means positive, that's positive is down. If we say go up one row, it's minus one. That means you're going up. So how you say up and down in Excel, minus is up, plus is down. And so that's basically how offset works. But there's another variant of offset, but let me show you this first one. So if I say equals to offset here, Microsoft says offset returns a reference to a range that is given a given number of rows or columns from a given reference. Well, okay. So if I tab, I'm going to do control A. Control A basically brings this argument box so it's easier to understand. So reference in this box, reference means where he is standing, where is offset standing? That's reference, right? So what's the reference? He's standing in the middle. Then if I come here and say row one, column one, I want you guys to think. I said one, one, where do you think offset is right now? Can you type that in the question box? Okay, right now we're standing at, um, he's standing in the middle and I've said row one, column one. Can you just type in the question box or the chat box, where do you think offset is? Which number is offset in right now? Let's see what the answer is. So we're saying offset, you're standing here. Go row one, column one. Okay, click okay. Offset is in 200, exactly. So 200 guys, well done. So offset is standing here. It moved one down, that is row one. And then once it's here, it got another command to go right and it went here. So that's what offset did. So offset, we know how it moves. So if I come here, one last check. What about this? If I say offset, you are standing here. Move row one, column minus two. Where are we now? Suggestions, where are we now, where are we now? Type it in the question box, let's see. Where are we now? He said, we said row one, column minus two. Where do you think we are? Because if you're standing here and you say row one, it's come down here. If you say minus two, it means left two times. One, two, left. Excellent. So now that you understand this, everybody knows we are standing here right now. That means offset is in 260. Click OK, you see offset's in 260. Now for the interesting part with offset. This, we understand row and column. Now let's understand height and width. So for height and width, if you remember, we've said offset, you're standing here. Go down one, left two. Offset is currently in 260, yes? We all get that? Offset is standing in 260. Now if I say height, if I say height two and width one, now your height is up and down, is the height, how, uh, that's how tall you are, up and down. 
and your width is basically how wide are you. So if you see, FSAT is standing at 260 right now. By standing at 260, you've now told it, I want you to be too tall. That means it's 260 and 904. Right now it's highlighting this two. That's what offset is doing. Now you've told it width is one. By saying width is one, that means it's only one width. It's not, um, it's not going to highlight two. If I said two, for example, two means while you're highlighting this, you're going to highlight two columns as well. So you're highlighting two rows and two columns. But let me leave it as one for now. So what Offset is doing now is actually highlighting data. If I click OK, Offset, I mean, Excel is confused. Excel is like, how can you show more than one thing inside a, inside a cell? You can't show more than one thing in a cell. So anytime, guys, this is another t tip or trick. Anytime you see value in a cell, value error, value error basically means there's too much to show. There's actually a range. You're highlighting a range which cannot be shown in a cell. But then another trick for you guys, another trick is this. If you want to audit a formula, you press F2. F2 is function key two. Then if you want to force that formula to show what's really inside, after you press F2, you press F9. F9, as in F9, the thing we don't want to get in exams, F9. So I've pressed F2 and F9. Look at what I have inside that cell hiding. I have 26904. So look at what has happened with offset. Offset was standing alone here. You told him, go down one step, one, one row. You told him, go left two columns. He came to 260. Then you told him your height should be two. Then he highlighted two. And your width should be one. So can you see the result? 26904. That's what inside the cell. That means inside that cell is an array. We call it an array. It's a range. Now, what can we use this for? Let me show you a beautiful way to use this in your model, in your financial model. So I'm going back to my financial model, and this is the last thing we're going to do, guys, to show you how to implement offset to do your depreciation calculations. So if you look at this table, this table works fine, but the thing is it consumes too much data. So I've just highlighted the, all the calculations that gets your, um, your depreciation value using this table method. And there are 144 um, formulas in here just to calculate depreciation for those 10 years. Now, 144 formulas, we're going to replace it with one formula. All right? And this is how it works. So if you scroll, if I just scroll up here, have a look. So I want to calculate the depreciation. Let me start with the depreciation in this middle here. So if you look at it, this depreciation should be 16.2, right? So the depreciation should be equal to, if I tell offset, if I tell offset, offset, please stand right here. Stand right here. And once you stand right there, I want you to basically don't go any, don't go down. You remember a row means go down. Don't go down. Don't go up. But the height, you know, is standing here, by the way. The height is up and down. No height for you. I don't, the height should be just be one. I want you to be one row tall, but I want you to go left four ways, four times. I want you to go left four. Why am I saying left four? Left four because the width, left four, I'm going to say minus four. So minus, and where do I get four? There was a cell here that has the depreciation. That's this cell, four. So what I'm telling it to do is go left four and then what it will do eventually is give me an error, if you remember. Well, it's actually giving me a range in here. It's not an error, but it's a range. So if I press F2, F9, what it's giving me are the values for 23.3, 21.6, 10, and 10. That's there. 10, 10, 21.6, and 23.3. So since it's giving me a range, I'm now going to use the sum function at the beginning of this formula. Open my bracket, go to the end, and close my bracket. And what happens is sum sums all that up to 64.9, and then I'll now divide that by 4. All right? If I divide that by 4, I get my depreciation value of 16.2. But the issue is when I drag this to the left, it's going to be kind of confusing to Excel because Excel right now is looking to the left. So if you remember, it's coming here and dragging four items to the left. He's coming here and dragging four items to the left. So 
that is an error because here we don't need to drag four items to the left. We only need this item. And this one, we need only two items. Here we need only three items. Here we need only four items, All right? So to fix that, I need to go back to my formula. Let's go back to offset and tell offset, do you know what? Don't go left four. Just go left based on whatever I type here. So for this first column, I want you to go left one. Here are two, three, and then everything else is four. This concept, you will have to um, kind of go practice it on your own to understand how it works. But this is how you do depreciation in one single line instead of doing depreciation in 144 lines for one asset. And if you have 10 assets in your company, that's very huge calculations. So that's basically how the offset function works. A little bit complex to understand at first, but just think of a soldier start walking left, right, up and down, and then you get your offset. Thanks for watching another training video from Deep Brown Consulting. See you in the next video.